Dark Cast Network. The light shines brightest on our indie podcasts. Hi, this is Jenna. And this is Kelly. And you're listening to ODFM. This episode is one disorientation from murder. I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what it's about, but I'm disoriented all the time. I'm always disoriented. <laughs> but yeah, I had to go back through all the other ones and make sure we didn't do it. But we hadn't yet. Yay! So, yay! Also, there's a podcast you need to listen to uh, because you're a Jennifer. And it's Uh-oh. by Jennifers for Jennifers. Oh, get out. I totally have to do that. It's called oh Too God. Many Jennifers. And oh, it's that's hilarious. brilliant. I, I used to, to say, I used to say all the time that if all the Jennifers in the yeah. world got together, we could take over. Absolutely. All right. So it's March of 2011 and 19-year-old Kenya Mon- Monhe. Monhe. Mon- like like the artist Monet or like Monye, like, yay, it's Monday. Or yay, like- it's Monhe. Monhe. So it's spelled M-O-N-G-E, but it's Monhe. Okay. Monhe. All right. I'll okay. take your word for it. Yeah. Well, Kenya, she's getting Kenya, ready. Kenya, we're just going yeah. with Kenya. Never mind. <laughs> Kenya, because I could say that. She is getting ready for night clubbing in downtown Denver. Sweet. 2011. Yes. So Kenya is just four foot, 11 inches tall. Oh, my she's God. Like, smaller than your daughter, I think. <laughs> she is smaller than my daughter. <laughs> she's 12. That's. <laughs> it's tiny. Wow. She's a t- yeah. I have a five foot friend. That sounds really weird when I say it like that. I have a friend who's only five feet tall. I have a five foot friend. That's weird. <laughs> but but still, oh my gosh. I know. But like all shorter people or vertically challenged people, she makes up for it with her fiery personality. Exas- exactly. It's, it's like a, it's a thing. It's it a, is a thing. It's like little man syndrome. But for women, it's like this fiery, passionate. Feisty. Yep. Feisty. I love it. I had, a, um, my great aunt was 4'11", and she was so cute. Oh, she was like that. Like you did not you, mess with her. I was just going to say, and you didn't mess with her. No, right? she was an awesome yeah. little lady. Yeah. So Kenya, take her knees out. <laughs> she would. She's an ankle biter. Didn't we have one of the? <laughs> we talked about ankle biters. Before. Yes. Don't make me choke this early into the show. Okay. Anyway, okay. So Kenya was born in Honduras, and she lived with her grandparents for a while down in Honduras while her mother came to the states to try to set up a good life for them. No. Oh, mm-hmm. And while in Denver, when Kenya's mom first came here, she met her soon-to-be husband named Tony Lee. Okay. He had his own daughter, just a few years younger than Kenya, and the couple together worked to bring Kenya to the United States in 2004. Oh, okay. So when she arrived, Kenya didn't know a lick of English oh, God. at all. I know, but she's a passionate student, and she picked it up super quickly, became fluent right away. So That's impressive, because English sucks. English is like the hardest <laughs> of the all. Worst. I know. <laughs> Impressive. So she was very impressive. So Kenya was a natural leader. And after finishing high school, she had her sights set on a career behind the camera, like as a producer or something in broadcasting. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So she had just finished the first semester at college and she was excited to go out with friends on the nice evening in March, Denver. So Kenya, she had just broken up with her boyfriend, Lewis, a couple weeks before, but they were still friends. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Lewis still had a lot of feelings for her, and he still texted her a bunch and spoke to her daily. And they had previously lived together, but Kenya moved out, and now she's staying with friends. Okay. So on this particular evening, Kenya and her friends had plans to hit the clubs, but Kenya's only 19. So these are 21 and over clubs. Oh, yeah. That's um, some... But there are ways. There are ways. Yeah. I've heard. uh Uh-huh. I never... I've been told. We wouldn't know that kind no. of thing. No. So Lewis manages a 16 and up hookah bar, which I did not know you could go as a 16 year old. Really? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. I would think you probably couldn't smoke, but maybe you could just hang out. I don't know. <laughs> well, what difference does it make? Once you're in there, isn't it like just everywhere? So it you would matter? think, right? Yeah, I have <laughs> no get idea. Get away from it. It's kinda... All right. Anyway. Plus those things, it makes me think of like, are you sucking a tube that somebody had just sucked on like... Sorry, all Prior. I can think of is the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland and the... Yes, the, the, the caterpillar. The caterpillar. Yes. <laughs> A-E-I-O 
That's what comes to mind. Well, I wonder, like, do they swap out tubes so you're not using a tube somebody else just... I know. Gross. Because if they just swap out the tip, Mm -hmm. I mean, you're still... uh, Yeah. Anyway. Gross. That's a tangent. Kenya told her family that's where she was going, was to hang out with Lewis. So, yeah, she tells her family that she's going to go hang out at the hookah bar, since she's allowed to, but she doesn't tell them she's actually going downtown. yeah. Can't say I'm sneaking into clubs. Yeah. Her dad wouldn't have been too cool with that. So Lewis does let her park her car at the hookah lounge so she wouldn't have to pay, like, oh, downtown Denver's insane to pay. Really? To park in. It's ridiculous. So expensive. She's going to park free there. So Kenya and her friends, Gigi and Brittany, head to Lodo, which is short for lower downtown. Yeah. Okay. Denver. (laughs) Because that's too long to say. I know. They have all these (laughs) other districts, too. And there's like Rhino. And I can't remember what Rhino stands for. Anyway. Yeah. They have all these districts. So they, uh, yeah, they bring their fake IDs. Of course. I wouldn't know anything about that either. (laughs) Never. I don't know what you're talking about. Me neither. So they're having a blast drinking and dancing, and Kenya starts talking with a tall, thin guy and starts to hang out with him Ooh. for the night. Let's go with tall, dark, and handsome, because okay. tall, thin guy sounds <laughs> creepy. <laughs> it, <laughs> it sounds it like does. It doesn't sound so hot, but, you know. Again, with C-3PO. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just... <laughs> he is creepy. Okay. <laughs> uh, so at one point, she gives her purse to her friends to watch while she heads to the bathroom, you know? Mm. Right. And then when about 10 minutes had passed and she hadn't returned, her friends are like, hmm, what the hell happened? So they well, start looking around for her. Notoriously long yeah. lines in the woman's true, bathroom. True, true. I mean, it's stupid, ridiculous it's how... It's unfair. You yeah. know, there's always a line and the guys just go in and go out and... Yeah, yeah I it's... do appreciate the unmarked bathrooms now. Like, you can go in whatever. That is, that that is, is helpful. helpful. And I've helpful. gone into the guy's bathroom anyway, which yeah. also is taking your life in your own hands in a different way. In a whole different disease-ridden way, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> legit that they were like, oh yeah, it's only been 10 minutes for sure. She's still in line, right? You know, She's I mean, probably I get still it. in line, yeah. So they did go <laughs> right. and look around for her and couldn't find her in the club, but they're not too concerned at first, thinking, you know... Maybe she's having some fun with the new guy she met in the sure. bathroom or something. Oh, yeah. oh. <gasps> although yeah. some of those clubs. Oh, I God. Know. <laughs> so I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, who knows? But anyway, since she had left her purse with her phone in it with them, they're like, oh, she'll definitely be back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You, can, you can't get around anywhere without those things. So after an hour had passed and Kenya still hadn't come back, they're starting oh, to get worried. Well, yeah, that's... Yeah. So they keep looking for for her, asking people if they've seen her, nothing, and the club closes and they oh. still can't find her and they're kicked out. That's a problem. Right. So they wonder, well, maybe Kenya went home with the guy she's talking to, you know, but didn't tell them. Maybe she was too drunk. And didn't get her purse. I, right. I mean, yeah, but at this point, you're just kind of like reaching yeah. for answers here, yeah. right? You're like, well, where could she? Okay. Yeah, and they didn't want to go tell her parents that night and get oh, her in yeah. trouble in case. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, she, not she didn't only live did with she them, not but... go where she said she was going to and did right. something illegal, but she may have just did a one night stand with some guy right. she just met. I mean, yeah. Ugh. So they didn't want to bring it up to her family, even though, I mean, she doesn't live at home anymore and she's an adult, but they're still like, oh, please. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I could have been 30 and you would have told all that to my parents. They were like, what the hell's wrong? I know, exactly. You know. And hers were like that. So yeah. they were like, we're no, not no, going to no. say anything just in okay. case. So the next morning, Kenya's ex-boyfriend, Lewis, who is at the hookah lounge, mm-hmm. or goes back, and he notices that Kenya's car is still in the parking lot there. Oh. So he tries to call her. And he leaves a ton of messages, but she doesn't call him back. So Lewis starts to get worried, and he calls Kenya's family to ask if they know where she is. It's April 1st at this point. And so the, oh. <laughs> at first, the sister's the one that took the call, and she's like, that's a ridiculously bad joke. Are you trying to play an April Fool's joke on us? Because that is yeah. horrible. That's not funny. Yeah. Not and he's funny. like, I promise I'm not. I'm not. And so the family is immediately concerned because they're like, yeah. She would have gotten back to one of us by now. So they all continue to try to call her. And Kenya's little sister, she ends up getting a hold of Kenya's friends, Gigi and Brittany, who she went out with the day before. And they come to the family's home and they bring Kenya's purse and phone. 
and they're all, you know, apologizing. We're sorry we didn't say anything. We didn't want to get her in trouble. We thought she'd be home by now. Right. So uh, the family tries to report her missing, but they're told, you know, she's an adult. You got to wait 72 hours. She's an adult. You have the right to go missing. Yes. All yada, yada, yada. So Kenya's dad, Tony, I mean, he considers himself her dad since she moved to the States and they got married. I mean, they are very close knit. So, uh, yeah, Tony starts to go through her phone to see if he can get any info from it. And he sees a lot of texts from Lewis throughout the evening, like checking in her. He sounds a little bit like a jealous ex-boyfriend, like, who are you with? What are you doing? Gotcha. Yeah. That kind of thing. And then he finds a curious text that got his attention. (laughs) And it's not from Lewis. It says, hey, this is Travis, guy with the creepy white van. Just making sure you got home okay. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> so many red flags. We told you not to be in the damn van. Who advertises themselves like that? <laughs> like, I just said, I'm the guy with the creepy white van. Call me back, yo. You know. What? Creepy white. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So uh, Tony immediately calls the number. And over the next two days, he leaves over 20 messages with Holy this number. Holy shit begging this Travis guy to call him back because he's like, I bet this is the last person that saw her if she talked to somebody after the bar. Sure does yeah. sound like it, but that would mean that she would have given him her, her number. number and and didn't and have put her, her purse phone. back. Okay. Yeah. So she didn't give him she didn't give him her number at the end of the night, but when they first met up Possibly. The, whatever. Okay. Yeah, anyway. Who knows? Right. Yeah. I was just trying to put that all together. And it in my could head be here. she forgot she didn't have her phone with her because she was pretty trashed at some point, they say. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. So Travis, the creepy white van guy, he finally calls Tony back and he tells him that he and his friend, when they were out downtown Denver, they saw Kenya while driving in his van that night. She was obviously very drunk and was talking to a homeless man who seemed to make making her very uncomfortable, which I know the oh. area they're talking about, it is it's an awesome bar scene, but it is also homeless townville down there. Oh. So. So she wasn't with it. This was like just a. This was after the club. Yeah. I. So they just saw her with some homeless dude and they're like, she doesn't look comfortable. So they pull over. Okay. And they rescue her from the sketchy guy. <laughs> this is In what their creepy Travis white says. Van? In the creepy white van. Okay. And drove around with her. And he says they're trying to help her find her car. Because she couldn't remember where she left it. Dear God. Okay. Yeah. She didn't remember the hookah lounge somehow. So after a while, Travis stopped and dropped his friend Eddie that was in the car off. Mm -hmm. And Kenya told him, I want to stop somewhere and get cigarettes. Don't know how since she didn't have her purse. Maybe she still didn't know. Right. I don't know. So they stop at a gas station, but it's closed, which I also found weird. Okay. But while at the gas station, Kenya's like, hey, look at that guy down there, down the street a little bit. He has, he's smoking cigarettes. You know, stop here. I'm going to run down and talk to him. But she's just going to go up to some random dude and ask for. Right. She is very friendly and feisty and her family could see her doing this. So, (laughs) yeah. So she goes down there to bum a cigarette from him and she's talking to him and Travis is sitting there waiting in the van for a bit. But then Kenya turns around and waves him away. And he's like, are you sure you don't want to ride home or something? What the hell? This is so, like, this is just a laundry list of things you should never do. Never do as a young woman in a oh city. Oh my God. Right. So Travis, you know, he's like, well, I don't know her. So he leaves. Right. And that's the last time he says he's seen her. Wait, but when did he get her phone number? And what he didn't the fuck? explain that. I'm it sorry. Might... This is all. Right. Very confusing. Mm. So then um, Tony's like, well, you need to meet me and show me where you took her so mm-hmm. that he can go look for her. And so he agrees. He agrees to meet Tony at oh. the gas station that he okay. had dropped Kenya off at. So well, that's less suspicious. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, so you'd just be like, oh, no, I don't, uh, you're breaking up. I can't. Right. Uh, uh, I can't hear you. Blah. So Tony, he's not one to mess around. And he is beyond pissed and frustrated at this point because it's been a couple of days. Oh, shit. OK. So right. he grabs his gun for the meetup. Yeah, yikes. And his wife, she's like super worried that Tony will take things too far, you know? So she calls the police to tell him what's going on. Oh, shit. So <laughs> she's like, my husband is very angry. He's taking a gun to go meet this guy because police right. say they can't do anything. Because so you guys aren't doing shit. Yep. So. Yep. so Tony's taking this on. So the police meet Travis and Tony at the gas station and they make sure Tony leaves his gun in the car. <laughs> 
But it's kind of good because then they're there to find out firsthand, you know, yeah. from Travis what's going on, too. Oh, good. Are they going to take notes this time? Yes. They cool. actually got involved. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for help. So while talking with Travis and taking down a report of his statement, police ask if they can search his van. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got nothing to hide. In the front is a bunch of trash, but the back is completely cleaned out and it smells strongly of bleach. So they're like, okay, <laughs> uh, this is odd. Why does this smell this way? And he's like, well, I make and sell gluten-free granola bars. So my van has to be what? super clean, Are you, which I, is not unusual in Colorado, I, <laughs> honestly. I, really? I know. I, I know. He, and he makes them in his... He doesn't make them in the van. No. But he carries them in his van and delivers them. So he has to have his van very well, but aren't clean. They packaged? I or so yes. I don't understand. Yeah, I'm exactly. Sorry. This is that is another red flag, right? But come on, I can I think of have... like at least three better reasons off the top of my head. True. My friends and I went out drinking and one of them pissed Someone himself puked. and puked all over yeah. the place, so I bleached the shit out of it. Like, that would have been I mean, a much better on. excuse. <laughs> so true. He needs to listen to more podcasts. <laughs> he, Good God. Okay. He's just like creepy <laughs> my van, my granola bars. That'll work. <laughs> my gluten-free granola bar. <laughs> the funny thing is, it is so not unusual for Colorado for someone to make their very own healthy food and sell it to vendors. Like I've had can people I, try to sell I it at my store. Can I interest you in my gluten-free <laughs> granola bars with just a hint of bleach? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> They're very sterile. <laughs> right? Oh, nasty. They help fight COVID too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so police actually bring Travis in to the station to get a, a, a true report of, off of him. That's an probably official a good statement. idea. <laughs> yeah, so he indeed does have a granola bar business. Oh! And he, he seems like an up-and-up guy. He's really? good-looking. He's blonde. He's in great at van? speaking. Really? That was not right. a cover? Nope, wasn't a cover. That's the worst cover story I've ever heard. <laughs> I know. He's uh, super charming. He's great at speaking. And so... He and he gives the same exact account that he gave Tony and tells them after leaving Kenya with a smoking man, he went home where he lives with his girlfriend. He tried to be a good He Samaritan tried to be a good Samaritan. Her, but yeah. then he was like, all right, this drunk chick doesn't want my help. I mean, right. what am I going to do? Good Sit luck. here and <laughs> babysitter all night? I don't know. Right. Okay. So police bring in his girlfriend to confirm his alibi. And she does. She said, yep, at about 2.30 in the morning, he came home and he was home till you know, 8.30 at night. Any. Smelled like bleach and <laughs> granola bars. <laughs> totally. Totally which he normal. Does, which yep, is also so. very strange, but it's a turn on for me. Yes. So, it's you know. kind of like uh, Monica with the vapor rub. Oh, the, the Vicks, Vicks. vapor rub. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Chandler. <laughs> right. Yes. So, of course, uh, the police, they bring in Lewis. That's the ex-boyfriend for an interview oh, as right. well. And Lewis tells him, you know, I was at work the whole night. It was verified. He was at the hookah lounge. He okay. didn't see them. So he's quickly eliminated as a suspect. And they also interview Kenya's friends and are told about that tall, thin man, man that Kenya the Tall, thin with. man. Yes. Yes. The tall. At the bar. He, he was tall, thin, and had dark hair and a baseball cap. Okay. They show the ladies a picture of Travis with the creepy van. Right. And ask if, is this the guy you saw? And they were like, no, no way. This guy had brown hair that guy has blonde hair it's totally not him okay yeah and travis is blonde hair blue eyed nothing like the man kenya was with hmm. they're like okay what do we do next so the police return to the gas station to look for surveillance cameras but ooh. <laughs> yeah ooh, good idea but unfortunately they don't have any <laughs> so uh, hey at least they didn't bother it's not like they put them up and then didn't plug them in or didn't use a tape or yeah at least they're just like yeah we're not gonna fake it we're just gonna we're just not even gonna try so please go back to the place she was last verified to be which was the 24k club in denver Ooh. <laughs> so they show staff kenya's picture but it's like a really busy club i mean it's oh, in right. the bar district so they don't immediately recognize her. Fortunately, they notice the club has surveillance cameras outside the front of the door and inside oh. as well. Okay. Perfect. Let's check the tapes. So the camera covering the front door shows Kenya arriving with Gigi and Brittany, like okay. I said, at 1130. And they watch the entire tape for the night and it never shows Kenya leaving. So that's weird. She's not still in the bathroom, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> She got locked herself in a stall. That also is 
like confirms my theory that they don't really clean those bathrooms yeah, at the clubs. Yeah, so they didn't check the bathroom. Ugh. Going through the interior video, they do spot Kenya in her short little red black dress with her red heels, talking nope. with a guy that her friends described. Nothing seems out of the ordinary, but they have to figure out if Kenya left through a different door. What happened? Yeah. Please go back to the bar where di- when different staff is there so they can question them because, you know, it's so busy. Oh, they right. Have different, different people. Right. <clears throat> she's so small. Couldn't she's someone so just tiny. put their coat over her? Right. And just <laughs> maybe, that's out, like- maybe she's in the coat. <laughs> Right? Area. <laughs> or if, if she was just like if she just walked slightly in front of a taller person you'd never right. see her, you'd never like, see her. <laughs> maybe maybe it was a glitch in the system and you just can't Ugh. quite see her one bouncer says he does remember kenya and the man, man she was with he said he threw the couple out because they were both so overly drunk oh yeah and he had sent them out the Shit. back door instead of the front and there was no surveillance back there well wait i mean okay i get it they're overly drunk Right. But but give so her a chance to get her purse or something. Well, that's the thing. Like, you, I mean. And it's dangerous. Obviously, like, he didn't know if they were together. Right. Her friends don't know where she, I mean. Yeah. Isn't I'm that sorry. I find scary. this a very irresponsible I thing do too. to do. I think that's so mean to do. So he sends them out, kicks them out. <laughs> so with that clue, the police begin to look around the area outside of the club for other surveillance cameras. Uh, Jesus. Okay. They spot literally hundreds of them hundreds because this is the busiest part of the city oh shit okay every shop everything along there has surveillance cameras wow okay they spend hundreds of hours going through all the sure going through all of them trying to figure out which direction and all that oh not a small task so they round up footage from every place along 15th street and it sounds like a short 15th and 16th streets are like they seem never ending i mean they've got shops like Crate and Barrel, these huge, you know, it's like oh God. downtown so, Chicago. Yeah. It's huge. So after searching hours of tape, they do catch sight of Kenya pretty much being pulled along by hand by oh, a man shit. outside of an apartment building. Oh, God. And she's obviously drunk. She's off kilter. She's just barely keeping up with them. Oh, boy. Luckily, the apartment complex is swarming with cameras. Oh, and good. Okay. They catch the two walking into the building and then going into an elevator. And they catch him then on the fifth floor getting off and they disappear down the hall. And Kenya's like stumbling and hitting the wall. I saw the video of this as she goes. So she's obviously barely able to walk. (sighs) So they go to the building and they go to door to door on the fifth floor. An apartment, this apartment number throws me off because it's the fifth floor. At apartment number 103 on the fifth Uh, floor. I know. (laughs) Like, shouldn't it be 503? Uh, uh, Who? Yeah. (laughs) Who <laughs> signed these what? numbers? Uh, Maybe they went okay. from top to bottom. I don't know. Makes no sense. So on the fifth floor on at room uh, 103 at apartment 103, a man answers the door and it is clearly the man from the video. Like the tall, can t- thin man? Tall, thin man with dark hair. His name. And it, I, it came as a different name in each thing I looked at. I hate that shit. I know. And I'm like, what? And they were very different names. So I'm going with Chad Douglas. It might be Chad Davis. It might have been... A whole nother one. I was like, what? Uh, Tall thin man. He's just Chad. (laughs) Yes. He's brought to the police station for questioning. And he tells them he met Kenya for the first time at the 24K club where they danced and flirted. He tells them they both drank way too much Mm -hmm. and were thrown out of the club. See, I also have his name written as Cade because that was another name I saw him as. Cade? That's not even close. No. I think it's Chad. We'll we'll call him Chad. So Chad took her back to his place, but she left a few minutes later after realizing she left her purse and phone at the club. He said they kind of were starting to make out. And then she was like, oh, shit, I left my purse. But wouldn't there have been video of her leaving? Yes. So police go back to the tapes. Yeah. And they find Chad is actually telling the truth. They watch Kenya go back to the elevator just a couple minutes after she had been with him. He didn't follow her or anything on the tapes. So she's too drunk to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. He has to practically drag her to his place. But then when she wants to leave, he goes, he's like, yeah, right. good luck. Right. All these people that are just like, eh, you're on your own. Jesus. OK. Yep. Damn. I really thought tall thin guy was our guy. I know. I did. <clears throat> or okay. yeah, there's so many that could be suspects. Right. They watch her leaving alone outside of his apartment. And then they start watching other tapes down the same street. And she's spotted heading into a hotel. And they're thinking, eh, maybe she's taking a pee break. And that seems to be what okay. she does. 
And that's okay. at 2.04 a.m. She's alone, still wobbly, but she's okay. Jesus. Then there's video of her talking to a man who looks homeless outside, I think of the hotel or somewhere on the street, and okay. a white van pulls up, probably okay. Travis's. So it's like fitting all it these narratives. Fitting. And normally that would be very scary, but right. <laughs> we talked to creepy van guy, so right. this is a so, weird story, man. Okay. <laughs> A little bit about Travis, the van dude. He's a 31-year-old entrepreneur who rents out a space in a bakery where he okay. makes his granola bars. He carries them in a round in a huge cooler, like a large white cooler, and he makes deliveries to shops and customers all around. Kind of a DIY. He's overzealous with the cleaning procedures. <laughs> Apparently. <He's> like <laughs> a little OCD. Yeah. So, but he's a hustler, so he's getting it done. Okay. So journalists start to get a hold of the story. And they start putting it all over the news. I mean, Kenya's family, too. They print flyers. They're going door to door. They're all over downtown trying to get info. A flood of tips start to come in. And one very important one comes in from a woman named Monica Poole, the owner of a gluten-free bakery hmm. in uh, Denver. She brings in a surveillance tape loaded with footage. And she <gasps> thinks there's something on the video that police might be interested in. Oh, shit. Okay, so Monica Poole, the owner of the bakery, had recently noticed money missing from the cash register at her bakery. So she went to check the surveillance tapes to see if she could catch whoever's doing this. Somebody that works there is doing this, obviously. Right. And she catches more than she bargained for. So <laughs> she goes to check on the surveillance camera and tapes. And when she goes to a certain one, she notices it's unplugged in the office. She's like, well, the that's camera's weird. unplugged? Yeah. Oh, so she plugs it back in and she rewinds the tape. Tape's still there and everything. She rewinds the video surveillance to find out who unplugged it. She's like, what, what the? Sure. Who's doing this? There's obviously something they're trying to get away with. She's shocked to see Travis walk in the office wearing bright yellow cleaning gloves up to his elbows before unplugging the camera. This guy loves to clean. <laughs> Dude, this guy, he's, he's the Monica Geller of like the male Monica Geller. Yes. This is crazy. He loves okay. bleach. Uh, but the bakery workers, they don't wear giant cleaning gloves normally. So, like, what's he doing? Hmm. hmm, weird. Fortunately, that's not the only camera in the bakery. And the others weren't unplugged. I don't know. Maybe he didn't know about those. So, oh, so much for being uh, attention to detail there. Yeah. Travis. Yeah. <laughs> Travis. So, in the storeroom, the camera shows Travis wheeling in his large granola cooler on a cart. And the cooler is duct taped shut. And he pushes the cart to into... keep the freshness in? Maybe. Super fresh. <laughs> hey, Super duct fresh. Shaped cooler? <laughs> yeah. That's not suspicious. Yeah, not weird. And he puts it in the freezer. And Monica's like, you know, police are like, huh, whatever. But Monica's like, no, no, no. You don't freeze granola well, bars. Also, why do you have to freeze the cooler? The cooler keeps things cold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to... Exactly. And she's like, Travis doesn't freeze his granola bars because right. he delivers them fresh. Right. So what's he doing? <laughs> Plus, that's not how a cooler works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Travis somehow gets wind that his name's kind of getting in into mm. the role of things like police might be looking at him. So he tries to get in front of the investigation by talking to a TV station and like the journalist pulls no punch and just punches and she's asking him. So did you kill Kenya or did you hurt her? And he's like, no, no, not at all. But the investigators are watching this, of course, on TV when they're seeing him interviewed. And as when he's asked if he murdered Kenya he says no, but he nods his head. He's like, no. I don't. <laughs> so hard to do. How do you do that? That's. <laughs> I know. Isn't I'm, that... tr I'm trying right now and I can't I know. say. I know. No and nod your head. I know. It's weird, right? I can't. I just make a circle. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm so confused. Oh, that's I know, weird. right? Okay. So they catch that and they're like, he is obviously lying. You know, their <gasps> investigator is really good at catching lies and he's like yeah i could tell he was lying so now that weird... tipped him off but not the not the cooler with the duct tape that they put I, in the freezer yeah, yeah. that like, was fine hey, that's not but weird like, but he's he nodded totally his lying. head weirdly <laughs> <laughs> <We're> totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay so another weird detail is you know he remembered everything from that night but in the interview he's like what's the girl's name again to the journalist and they're like kenya oh yeah yeah kenya 
Like he couldn't remember. Oh come on! Who there's she a was. there's a missing person investigation. Right. He's part exactly. of it. He can't remember her name. And it's been all over the news. And I Please. mean, he texted her and shit. He obviously knew her name, but dude. Everybody's like, something's weird here. Especially uh-uh. Tony. Tony Lee with his gun wanted to get out there mm-hmm. and get after Travis. Let me ask him. I'll ask Let him. Let me. I'll, <laughs> I'll get him to talk. So witnesses also came forward saying they saw someone burning something outside of the bakery one night. Which is kind of weird. You usually try not to burn things around the bakery. <laughs> That's <laughs> I made a whole batch of bad bread, and I don't want anyone to see. I'm going to go right, outside. I'm just going to burn it. it. I don't want anyone to know. No. So the police find a barrel there outside the bakery. It's obviously had things burned in it. Oh. So they decide to take it and swab it for any evidence it might have, just in case. Okay. They also attempt to collect any evidence from the bakery, so they swab the whole freezer. Okay. They confiscate yeah. Travis's van to swab it as well. Okay. However, everything is spotlessly clean because we know Travis loves bleach he so much. He is a Monica Geller. Yep. He nope. is. He is Can't into find his shit. bleach. <laughs> so, nope. but they do notice on the uh, undercarriage of the van that there's a lot of dust and weeds on it. Oh, okay. So they're like, okay, he must have been All driving right. on dirt roads. Maybe he does deliveries up in the mountains. I don't know. It's where he goes and harvests his own gluten and free wheat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's wild wheat up in the middle. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So they, they're they like, hey, Travis, we need to come have you come to the station and do a polygraph tomorrow. But he doesn't show up the next day. I am so surprised by that. So police begin checking Travis's cell phone records on the night of Kenya's disappearance. And they find he made and received several call-outs in a rural area called Keensburg. Keensburg, which I've only ever been there once, but it is about 40 miles from Denver and is definitely off his granola delivery route. So <laughs> the okay. only thing in Keensburg, and you'll be familiar with this name, Tiger King, The um, in Kingsburg, they have a wildlife um, oh recovery area. Okay. So uh, people that have owned lions and tigers and bears that they're not supposed to have and they get confiscated. They go to these wildlife refuge places. And so you can go and visit and watch them. Uh, They have wolves. It's a cool, cool area. But it is like Africa. It is just plains forever. So there is nothing in Kingsburg but that There's nothing there. Okay. Except for crops and dust. So maybe the the tigers, lions, and bears are really into gluten-free granola bars. (laughs) I don't... Never thought of that. They wanted delivery. They were like, we want to be healthy too. Well, I mean, they're, they're not in their natural habitat. They obviously had to adjust. Uh, <laughs> they needed to become know. granolas out here. Right. Yes. They needed, to be, they needed to become a part of Colorado. Exactly. They're ex- accepting their new reality. <laughs> trying to, like, fit in. I'm just a normal <laughs> house cat. Wow. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they all have man buns. They're really... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Man bun tiger. But uh, some of Tiger King's tigers are there. Oh, really? Okay. So uh, the cops and investigators, they scour the fields around Kingsburg. Probably not where the tigers are. Nobody's allowed to scour those fields. Right, yeah, so, well, right. I wouldn't want to. But they didn't cr- come across any clues. So, <gasps> What if he fed her to one of the tigers and lions? Ugh. It'd be really hard to get into their area. Oh, yeah. Okay. But he might have. You never know. Right. Gross. Would have been a good idea. Pig farm. He could have found a pig farm, but he pig did not. Farm. <laughs> There's more of those around. Okay, so travel tra- travelists. Travelists was traveling. <laughs> he did travel. He traveled so much that he disappeared from the area. But oh. since police have his van, clearly didn't take that. So interesting. They, yeah, so they dig a little more and they find an ex girlfriend of his that she said, Yeah, I let him borrow my forerunner to deliver his granola bars, but he hadn't returned it. So she was going to file a police report about mm-hmm. it so they're like here we'll help you with that let's yeah. do that <laughs> we already have the paperwork started <laughs> let's we'll come to you so after putting out a bolo for the truck the denver investigators get a call from austin texas oh. that the forerunner and travis are in custody down there oh because of the stealing of the forerunner so oh, travis perfect. is extradited back to denver to face car theft charges and they ask him about the burn barrel and he's like oh yeah yeah that was me i was burning moldy marijuana so <laughs> what? Oh, for Christ's sake. Come on. <laughs> so police, while he's in custody, they do get a DNA swab from him. Thank God. What? 
I'm still thinking about the moldy marijuana. <laughs> no, come on. That, that can't be good to inhale if you burn no, it. No, right? That's got to be really bad for you. <laughs> On all, uh, yeah, Ugh, gross. Okay, yeah, okay. that's why he's burning it. He's like, okay. oh, this is terrible. What do you do with moldy marijuana? Oh my god, okay, he should uh compost that. Maybe it do, yeah, okay. there you go. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> all your crops start tasting like marijuana. Your, oh, your tomatoes come up. Are these edibles? No. These are a little spooky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that'd be amazing. They start, <laughs> everything has a little kick to it. Okay, so. Uh, after he gets back in Colorado, though, they do get his DNA swab, and Travis's ex girlfriend decides to drop the th- theft charges, and he's released. Why? Because that's <laughs> all. I guess she was. Uh, she like, just wanted oh, her car back, big, and now she's fine. I just fine. want my car back. Yeah. So police decide to follow him and see if they can catch him doing anything. They still has okay. have his van, and Travis ends up leaving for Fort Collins, just an hour north of Denver, and about fifteen <laughs> miles south of me. So I've heard of that place. Yes, what do you think <laughs> familiar, very familiar. So police follow him for a while all around Fort Collins, but he keeps pretty low profile, and they eventually give up. I mean, he does some stupid stuff. I, he got uh, in trouble for partying too hard downtown in Old Town Collar- or Fort Collins and jumping on cars. So he had a little Did, bit of what things. What part he was of doing. your murder suspect you should lay low? Right, don't getting- go jump on cars. But <laughs> I mean, it was stupid little things like that. So they were like, okay, he's just being a doofus. Right now, it's the Fourth of July. So that was March. This is now the Fourth of July in Fort Jeez. Collins. Okay. And 30-year-old Lydia Tillman is at the fireworks festival that's so popular here. They do kind of like. Chicago, they do them over the lake, you know. Nice. Okay. Beautiful. So Lydia just moved to the area and she was starting a new job as a wine distributor. What the hell have I been doing with my life? (laughs) Maybe it'd be like the Coca-Cola and you get free wine forever. Right. (sighs) I've been doing everything wrong. Exactly. We don't get free shit out of our podcast. (laughs) No. Except for all your awesome stickers you send me. That's not free though. So Lydia is walking to her apartment after the festival. And she feels like she's being followed. You know that feeling when you know you're oh, being God. watched. Oh, God. Yeah. But she keeps going and she goes, gets her apartment. Ah, but she unlocks the door and a man indeed had followed her. Oh, God. He pushes her into the apartment, beats her fiercely, like <gasps> bad. And he viciously oh, ra- rapes her. I should have done oh, a warning God. at the beginning. Oof. Afterwards, he pours bleach everywhere. Also all over Lydia. And <gasps> then he lights her apartment on fire and leaves. <gasps> Wait, yeah. is, is bleach flammable? I have no idea. We should do an experiment. I just Gavin would love to do that experiment. I was just going to Google it, crazy person. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You're like, let's do an experiment. <laughs> what? Hell we no. Know. I was going to Google it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I mean, it's caustic, but I don't think it's huh. flammable. But maybe he put something else down, too. But he well, definitely yeah, put sure, bleach everywhere. Well, yeah, sure. But I just everywhere. was like, is it? Okay. Oh my and he, God. he poured it all over Lydia, too. Oh, oh, God. But Lydia was not done, even though her apartment's on the second floor and she has been beaten severely. She jumps out the second <gasps> floor window. Holy shit. And lays bleeding and broken on the ground outside. Oh, my God. The apartment is a raging inferno, and people blocks away can see the flames eating the building. So the calls yeah. are coming into 911 like crazy. And people are like, there's probably someone in this apartment. Get it there. So whew, the fire is burning so hot that the door handles are melting off the oh apartment when the, when the fire department gets there. <gasps> and rescuers get there. They find Lydia barely alive, beaten, naked, on the ground outside. Oh, my God. And they rush her off to the hospitals. Oh, my God. Doctors, when they see her say her injuries were likened to that of a severe car crash accident victim. Holy like, cow. So ridiculous. They didn't think she could and have been. And he poured bleach on bleach her. Jesus. On her. Okay. So Lydia's airlifted to a Denver intensive care unit. She is absolutely unrecognizable except for a tattoo on her calf. See, this is why we get tattoos. Yeah, see, yeah. <sighs> but her jaw was shattered as were her eye sockets. Her wrists, I know, whew, her wrists were broken and her ribs were cracked and she was nearly burned to death. Jesus. After getting to the hospital, Lydia suffers a massive stroke from her beating. And oh, 
I mean, this poor woman, oh, the shit she went through. Doctors put her into a medically induced coma and they tried to aid with her healing with that. But they're like, chances are her living or, you know, yeah, not good. So police go to interview everyone they can. For Lydia, they find out she is single, attractive, and popular. And they, they're they like, well, this attack must be personal because it was so vicious and so violent. Mm-hmm. However, they can't find anything with anything bad to say about her. Like, literally nobody has a th- thought. Like, there can't be anybody. She doesn't have a anybody. jealous ex-boyfriend or a... Yeah. No, they Admirer couldn't find anything. Or a, yeah, that's okay. what they thought too. Like somebody, there's got to be somebody. But fortunately for Lydia, she fought hard and DNA evidence was found under her nails. Oh, yes. Wow. So Didn't bleach well enough, did we? Yeah, we didn't bleach everything. So another obstacle for police, though, in investigating her apartment is so destroyed by the fire. Like you can mm-hmm. barely make out even where the bed was. It oh was God. like nothing was left. Jesus, okay. Plus, the bleach that had been poured everywhere, of course, ruined things. But it was so much bleach that it still smelled of bleach even beneath the smell of the smoke. Like, whoa. <laughs> so, like, how's Damn. it? What's he bringing up barrels of bleach and throwing it Seriously, everywhere? I don't know. That's where you need to go looking for your yeah. suspect. Is <laughs> go look at bleach who's, barrels. Who's, like, getting <laughs> barrels of bleach at Costco? Because that's your guy. Yes, because that's the man. Damn. Meanwhile, detectives in Denver are sending information all over Colorado, everywhere that they can about Travis, because they're sure, especially to Fort Collins, because they're sure he'll be up to no good. You know, they just have a feeling. And one of the Fort Collins detectives who's investigating Lydia's case noticed those, their information they sent. And she's like, well, it's a long shot, but I'll connect with the detective in Denver on Kenya's Mm -hmm. case. When she mentions the bleach to the Denver detective, uh-huh. He immediately thinks this has to be Travis. So they decide to re-up surveillance on Travis again. That very charming and likable Travis, police are worried that because he is so likable and good with talking to people, he might be stalking more women. They start following him and they see him trailing women who were obviously inebriated. <clears throat> so he has a type. He has a type. Drunk. He wants them, <laughs> yeah, disoriented. Disor- he wants them absolutely disoriented. Yes, disoriented. So he was, while they're following him, he's leaving, leading a woman off the sidewalk into a more secluded area when they nab Oh, him. they actually see him do they this? They actually catch Holy him crap. in the act. Holy crap. They didn't immediately have anything to arrest him on at the time, but he gives them a fake name. Dumbass. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so they're able to arrest him then for giving false information and they put him in jail. I didn't even know you could get arrested for doing that. Yeah, apparently you can. Giving false information to a. I will. I will. Uh, I will Remember try to that. hold on to that information. <laughs> <laughs> just try in not case. to forget that. Oh. So that same weekend, the crime lab is desperately trying to finish their comparison tests of the DNA from Travis's swab that they took mm-hmm. and the tissue found under Lydia's nails. Yeah. So this is that same weekend. Travis was able to get bonded out, and he was scheduled to be released at 10:30 p.m. on Monday. So it's not like immediately. Like right, you see okay. on TV. It's like, it takes a while. So all weekend they're working on this DNA comparison. And just minutes before he's going to be released, like it is literally like 10, 28. Oh my God. The crime lab confirms it's a match. He's obviously Holy caught now. <gasps> and which Holy is great. God. I mean, it's so great. He wasn't able to get back out, but. Oh my God. He decides to make a deal. He tells investigators, you know, they're begging and begging. Please just tell us where Kenya is. We know yeah. you have something to do with it. Just give her body back to her family. And finally, he says, I'll tell you everything and confess to everything. Tell you where Kenya is and show you where the body is on one condition. When he goes to prison, he doesn't want to be labeled a sex offender. That is all he wants because he knows sex Seriously? offenders do not survive in jail. Yeah. I thought maybe he was going to ask for a gluten-free diet for the rest of his life. <laughs> I need gluten-free pasta. I need gluten-free. Yeah, no shit. Well, how? So Kenya's family's like, sure, do it. Give. I mean, well, it's not like people can't still find it out, right? I mean, it's <laughs> I mean, all over the news now. You know, they'll know. That's yeah, okay. Sure, we can promise so, that. Yeah. Meh. So he, they agree, and he opens the floodgates <gasps> of info. Oh shit. So he tells them Kenya had passed out in his van when he was driving around. So he had picked her up 
and all that. And he had dropped his friend Eddie off. He That was all true. And Eddie had okay. been interviewed too. Uh, so she passed out in his van and he began raping her. She woke up during it and began fighting him. So he beat her. I mean, she was 4'11". I think I heard 76 pounds. I mean, this was a Holy tiny crap. person. Yeah. So no chance. So he beat her, strangled her, and killed her. Then he drove an entire day with her inside the cooler in the back of his van. Ah! Ah, and he said something horrible, like she had gone into rigor mortis, and so he had to push her hand down, and that's why he had to duct tape it, because it kept opening the cooler. Ah! Mm-hmm. So that's why he had to duct tape it closed. So he puts Kenya in the freezer at the bakery. And this was during like business hours that he brought her in there. Seriously? Every time someone would go in there, he'd kind of follow them into the freezer to make sure they didn't try to look in there. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> so then later at night, then he took her out to go to bury her. And he takes police to where he buried Kenya near Kingsburg in a field beneath a copse of trees. And it was like really crazy because watching the video, of he um, steps out of the car to tell him them where she is. And he's pointing and the cop goes over there and he's like, like where here? And he's like, you're standing on top of her. And then he just oh. wails like this heart wrench. It was like he felt something actually, which was shocking, but it, uh. it was probably his own demise. He probably didn't give a shit. But so they found her. They had to bring her up. And oh, it sounded like really devastating for a lot of the uh, people that were working the case because they'd seen. I mean, she was gorgeous, this cute, Latina, adorable girl. And then to see her Look in that back. condition. Oh, my God. But Tony and his family get the call that Kenya's body is found and they get to have her back. And they, you know, oh, it, they had so much hope that she would be found alive. So when they yeah. got word, it was just heartbreaking but Lydia meanwhile who had been you know oh, yeah. barely clinging to life she's still fighting for her life in the hospital after four weeks in the coma Lydia wakes but she's unable to speak or walk and she's then transferred to a physical therapy unit where she relearned how to walk talk and eat again oh it was God. like a really long time she couldn't feed herself and so it was like a really big moment for her when she could actually eat again it was oh my ugh. god okay so her recovery is slow and grueling but she never gives up she is a oh, freaking amazing i don't know in time for travis's trial she is able to testify against him <gasps> i know she can't oh yet god. speak but okay she can write out her what she wanted to say and it took oh, okay. her hours to write it write just one sentence but her father read her statement for her okay um and in the statement, she wrote, oh, she's so amazing, makes me want to cry. She was so good. Okay, she wrote, Travis Forbes, you cause me no harm. My spirit, my soul, and my mind remain untouched. May you find peace in this life. Oh, oh my God. I know. Isn't she amazing? It makes me want to cry because she was so forgiving. And she forgave him wow. to heal herself, she said. So she says, like, she's sometimes angry that she had to go through this and lose the life she had planned. But she's like, I believe Travis was acting out of fear and hatred, and I Ugh. myself choose love and peace. And I that don't she know won. that I'm that good. I don't think I, I don't could think be I, that good. No, no. I mean, whoa. But the cool thing is, she did meet Kenya's family, and they like embraced her so. I mean, it's like a part of her fam wow. their family. So they gave Lydia Kenya's favorite ring. Wow. And I, I know, chills. and she oh wears God. it forever. So. A memorial resides on the plains where Kenya's body was left by Travis. And her family now works to help other families with missing family members. Wow. Wow. <sighs> During an interview with Dateline, Lydia gave Keith Morrison, old Keith, <laughs> she gives him a bracelet with an acronym for her name, Lydia, which okay. says, live your days inspired anew. <gasps> wow. And for Travis, because he kept his promise of telling them everything, he's given a sentence of life without parole for Kenya's murder and then an additional 48 years in prison without parole and without sexual assault on his record for Lydia's attempted murder. But, you know, in the prisons, they don't air Dateline, so no one will know. <laughs> Maybe. They, probably, they <laughs> I mean, totally do. On. They love those shows there. Are you serious? They so love yeah, those shows Just then. because it's not officially on his record doesn't right. mean, come on. Right. And last I saw, he's at the Canyon City, like, prison in, in Colorado, and it's it's a pretty violent 
right, so let's prison. all so let's all, let's all write a Travis. little letter <laughs> to uh, all the, to the, the inmates. So all the inmates there and just be like FYI <laughs> Travis watch Forbes. this special episode of Dateline yes yes and learn all about your your fun little your mate, cell your little you cell know. chap yes yeah you know but Lydia is cool she's still in the area she is in Fort Collins she is a yoga teacher now. Wow. And inspires everybody. Oh, she gives talks about what she went through. Inspiring. And she's a badass. And she says that uh, the yoga helped her recovery come through so quickly. So that's why she wow. helps other people with it. Okay. But I know. Amazing. Incredible that she fought so hard to live. Like, I oh. don't know if I could have gone through what she went through and still right? had the willpower. But she says even the day of her encounter with him wasn't the worst. It was facing him in court. Oh, that God. was the worst day. Wow. Crazy story, huh? Yeah. I know. And a lot of places, like I watched several shows about it, and they never mentioned the Lydia part of it. They would only talk about Kenya's thing. Really? And I'm like, wow, that's surprising because she's why he got caught. She Right, exactly. Part of like, why. That's... I mean, she was a huge. Otherwise, everything was circumstantial. So. Interesting. Yeah. Or maybe it's because they, they didn't talk about it because he had that whole deal about, you know, I'm not a sexual predator. Oh, maybe that was it. That, <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, but. my God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Would you like to hear Miss Horses? Uh, yes, please. I had a lot because I had to try. I kept trying to find freaking Chad, whatever his <laughs> name was. And <laughs> right. Everybody's <laughs> names and shit. So I had the cinemaholic.com, westward.com. Dailymail.co.uk, ColoradoWin.com, CBS Denver, Dateline, the show Secrets Uncovered, Deadly Connection. Oh, this is a new show that I found. What's that? Man with a Van. What? <laughs> I know. And it's uh, this. Oh, my God. This episode was called The Handsome Devil from Man with a Van. It's a whole new series. Man get out. Okay. Yes. And the other one was See No Evil, Good Samaritan. Because like you said, he was trying, yeah. pretending to be a good Samaritan. A good Samaritan. Yeah. Dude, this is like. Fucker with a van. An epic tale of why you're always told to go out in groups. Yes. Why, especially when you're a single yep. woman. You, you know. Not you to get too drunk. Don't yeah. get too drunk. Make sure people know who where you're, where you are, who Watch you're your with. Drinks. Yes. Because exactly. Kenya's father is for sure. And her friends think there was no way she was that inebriated because they drank the same amount as her. Gotcha. So they think maybe that Chad, whatever, or someone else might have dropped something in her drink. And right. Oh, although he so easily let her go, you know, from True. his apartment. I, maybe but it yeah. wasn't. Or maybe like when she was with her friends, they were watching what they were drinking. But then yeah. when she was with him, you know, shots yeah. for everybody. You right. know, Which I don't want to say but, that he's. No, but that, that's. Though. This is, unfortunately, this is, this is exactly what happens. And even if you're not it. out at a club right. or whatever, and you're just walking home from Fort right. Dubai by yourself. Yeah. You like yourself. all these guys, like it oh. showed him kept, they witness him following God. girls who are inebriated and keep trying yep. to like schmooze them a bit, you know, so mm -hmm. freaking creepy. And Fort Collins being a college town, oh, God. super easy pickings. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's why he came here. Oh, shit. Yes. Shit, that was creepy. a good story, though. Yeah. Also, he only unplugged one video camera. <laughs> Dude, look for more. I mean, they're kind of easy I mean, to spot. Maybe really? she had them a little hidden, but... Whatever. And even okay. then, of course they're going to rewind it and see it. So I wonder if he was also shady enough to have stolen money out of the register, or if that just happened to be somebody else who didn't you know, notice that there, was a, they did that there mention, was a camera on it. Right. And they did mention that he... What's her? Monica, Monica Poole, the owner, had been asking them all, and he eventually did say, oh, yeah, it was me. I'm sorry. I had to, you know, I used it to pay off some stuff, and that's why I unplugged the uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. right. So he because could have been just copping to it because he was trying to say that's why he unplugged, unplugged right, it. Unplugged, unplugged the thing. Exactly. It could have also been I mean, him because apparently he basically lived in his van. He was a almost like a transient, so... And he had such excellent morals. He obviously <laughs> wouldn't have stolen from the register either. So, right, um, right. He obviously cared so much right, about exactly. people. He cared about their diet, but that was about it. <laughs> he cared about their diet, and that was the other option I thought for the name was one diet. But mm. yeah, but no, this is no, yeah. this is the, that's better. I'm so glad she didn't end up in the gorilla bars. I was really worried you were going to tell oh, me she was in the gorilla bars. 
I was so worse. worried. I, I was well, so worried. Now that you said that, I was like, maybe he was trying to take her to the Tigers in Kingsburg. Kingsburg, because but it is so like the fences are so high and stuff. There'd be no, right. and I think there's a uh, razor wire from what I remember okay. when we visited. Ugh. Whew, I wouldn't want to be in there. All right. Oh, you guys. So your payment to us for this episode is to, if you like it, share it with someone else. Oh, that yeah. That would be awesome. Okay. I was like, they're paying for that? I was like, what's it? happening? What's yes. going on? Yes. By yes, sharing it, if it. you like it. Yeah. Yes, please. Share. Yeah. Um, yeah. Share it online. Verbally. Just tell people, oh, you got to listen to this podcast. Yes. Um, that'd whatever. be awesome. Or if Word you have mouth, a favorite episode, that. if you don't, just tell them to skip that one. I don't know. But... <laughs> If there you know you of go. someone that likes lions with man buns, tell them this is right. your episode. <laughs> this is your episode. <laughs> or if you're into gluten free, or who, granola. somebody who really likes gluten free, yes. <laughs> granola bars. You might want to hear this. Speaking of gluten free granola bars, mm. I have a podcast you should listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more exciting than you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh jeez. Okay, cool. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Yes, as long as you don't get in the van. Do not get in the damn van. Do not get in the van. Do not go off <sighs> while you're disoriented yes, by yourself. by yourself. Also, <sighs> I, no offense, but maybe, maybe watch out for gluten-free granola bars. I don't know. <laughs> or the man just that makes them. Just to be safe. Them. I don't know. You know or just, just the guy that makes them. Right. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, Oddies. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. If you're a longtime listener, hey... We cannot thank you enough for your continued support. And if you're a new listener, thanks for giving us a try. If you like us, please drop us a like, subscribe, or rate us so we can share our stories with more people around the world. And if you'd like more information, like links to our podcast and socials, along with our Patreon fan page, those links are all on Linktree under ODFM Podcast. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash ODFM Podcast. Side note, you guys, we're obsessed with fan art, and we love making things with it, like stickers for our fans. So if you'd like us to use your designs, send it to us at odfmpodcast at gmail.com. And if we use your design, we'll be sure to send you a sticker. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM, hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful. 